You've been driving downforce cars wrong in racing games and it's making you slow. It can take even decent drivers years to learn how to drive downforce cars effectively, but today I'm going to be showing you how in minutes. High downforce cars such as Formula 1 through 3 and LMP require a vastly different style of driving to their low downforce counterparts. This is due to the fundamental difference that downforce makes to how the car is driven on the limit. Downforce is created when the air flowing around the car deflects off of one of the wings. This pushes the car downwards, squishing the tyre into the tarmac, thus creating downward force, or in other words, more grip. Take a look at this. I'm going to make this car's wings totally flat, meaning no wind can deflect off them, producing zero downforce. The result is that it can't take this corner without plowing straight through it in a blaze of understeer. But if I put a massive angle of attack on the aerodynamic surfaces, they redirect more air, produce more downforce, and we can take it at full throttle. Trust the force, we must. Yeah, that was that was Yoda. These aerodynamics only come into effect at approximately 50 miles per hour. This is when enough air is hitting our wings to create this downwards force. And the faster we travel, the more air hits the wings and the more downforce is produced, allowing us to brake later, corner faster and accelerate harder. These types of cars are set up to get most of their grip from downforce. If we ever drop below that 50 mile per hour threshold, we're going to lose most of our grip. This is especially true on slower corners, in which you'll typically be nursing the car around until you can get back on the throttle again and regain downforce. However, there is a few easy ways we can maximise our grip levels, even on these slower corners. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, slow in, fast out. Well, it's time to throw that in the trash, because if you want to race in big boy cars, you've got to learn how to corner like a boy with big gonads. On some corners, you might instinctively want to dab the brakes to get more rotation in the car. This is because hitting the brakes shifts more weight to the front axle, giving them more grip and turn in power. This is fine in cars that rely mostly on rubber for grip, but in a downforce car, this isn't optimal in the slightest. You really need to get out of the habit of cornering like this, because in a downforce car, you require a technique that is totally unique. You would need to trail the throttle into this turn. This is to keep the downforce as high as possible by ensuring you don't scrub off too much speed on corner entry. It also keeps the grip levels much more stable and manageable as you're slowly bleeding off speed. Using this technique means you've reached full throttle much later, substantially past the apex in fact, but the overall speed through the turn is much faster. Here's a direct comparison of taking the corner with brake versus trailing the throttle. You can gain up to an entire tenth of a second using this technique, and it's a great example of the importance of adapting your driving style to work with the force, rather than against it. But don't go anywhere just yet because you're probably not applying the throttle correctly either. We've established that slow corner equals less downforce, so you won't be able to accelerate out of slower corners the same way I just did on the previous example. I practically curb stomped the throttle, going from zero to 100 real quick. But I was traveling at a high speed and had a lot of downforce being applied to the car, meaning my tires had enough grip to deal with this instantaneous hit of power. However, on this slower corner, we have almost no downforce. If I tried to get back on the throttle with a curb stomp here, the rears would instantly lose traction. Therefore, on slower corners, our throttle application needs to be much more progressive and smooth. But of course, it's not NASCAR, and it's not all about throttle application. Sometimes we have to brake, and aerodynamics affect how we brake massively. When you're traveling at a high speed, you can use much more of the brake pedal. More often than not, get into 100% brake pressure with no issues. Again, this is because the downforce is giving you much more grip. However, in slower braking zones, you're going to have much less downforce, meaning you won't be able to use as much brake. And remember, Brakes slow you down, so if we're traveling at a high speed off a straight going into a very slow T1, your downforce is going to be constantly decreasing as you brake, meaning you need to trail your brakes off. If you keep a constant pressure, it's going to result in a lockup. Locking up is bad for two reasons. Firstly, you're not slowing down when your tires are locked up, you're just sliding. Secondly, this front wheel skid actually causes your front tires to heat up, and when tires get too hot, they lose grip. In race cars such as Formula 1s, it's extremely easy to overheat the tyres, and once they get overheated, they lose grip more often, resulting in them heating up even more. 
It's a vicious cycle that you want to avoid at all costs. And there is a pretty easy way to avoid overheating your tyres. You'd think that in a downforce car, you'd be able to aggressively chuck the car into a corner on any line you want. But this is not the case. In a downforce car, you want to keep your speed as high as possible, even if this means taking a slightly compromised line. This is a line that might be the fastest in a regular car, but in a downforce one, we want to smooth this line out. It looks slower, but the extra downforce from the higher speed allows us to travel faster around the turn. This is because steering input scrubs off speed, so we want to steer as little as possible. Not only does this allow us to take the turn faster, but it also preserves our very delicate tyres. But there's something else you need to preserve too, your car. Click this video in which I teach you how to effectively win races without it ending up in a huge pileup.